Hey, what is up all my streaming friends? Wild for Games here. Make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below. Now you may know me from a bunch of Streamlabs videos where I help you be bigger and better using Streamlabs OBS. And I kind of want to kick it up an extra knot and show you some simple tips and tricks when it comes to importing and exporting. Perfect for all you new beginners out there and even exceptional for some of you veterans out there because you may not know these simple little tips and tricks. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, easily importing your overlay packs in their entirety. If you plan on buying or have already bought an overlay template package from companies like Nerd or Die, Visuals by Impulse, or Own.TV. By the way, I'm an affiliate with Own.TV, so you can help me out by using the affiliate link down below. You can sometimes import those with just a few clicks to where everything will go in the exact spot you need it, so that way you only have to make minor adjustments. Now, not every complete overlay package allows you to import it with ease, but if yours can, in Streamlabs OBS, go down to the settings and click on scene collection. Then click on import overlay file. Locate the file that you downloaded from the store of your choice. For example, I got mine from own.tv. Click on this and it will put all the appropriate sources and scenes in their correct location with everything inside of it easily organized for you to make minimal adjustments too. Now, like I said, if you wanna get one of these packs from owned, you can do me a favor by using the link down below and save yourself some money. Using template graphic packages is great and I recommend it for anybody new out there, but if you really wanna make your stream stand out, I recommend getting a custom package made for you and your stream. And the only place to really get that is with Fiverr where you can work one-on-one -on -one with an artist to get something special to make your stream stand out and you'll be super proud. You can do yourself an extra favor by using the link down below which helps support my channel, but it also saves you a little bit of extra cash. So back to our video. Importing with sync and nesting scenes and sources. When it comes to importing your synced or your nest scenes and sources, you're really minimizing the time it takes to edit those scenes and sources. I find this best to be used when you have to do things with your web camera or borders, but I'm pretty sure you'll find tons of uses for it. For example, if I create an element that has my web camera and border around it, I can import that element into my scenes. All I have to do is click on the plus sign and go to scene. Doing this helps reduce editing time because you don't have to make a bunch of minor adjustments in different scenes and sources. Since they're nested and synced, anytime you make an adjustment to this element, it'll sync across all of them, showing in the scene and source that it's put in. Tip number three is use the performance footer at the bottom of Streamlabs OBS. If you're the type of streamer that loves to use a lot of visuals, graphics, memes, or anytime you add a brand new scene or source, you're actually adding a little more work that Streamlabs OBS has to do. What you wanna do is make sure you're not overloading it so that way your stream is smooth. Go to the bottom left-hand corner and click on the performance window where you can see performance metrics. From here, click on CPU, FPS, drop frames, and your kilobits per second. This way, anytime you load something in, you can monitor what is actually happening within your stream to see if it's stressing it. And if it is, you may have to eliminate it or at least compress it a little bit down so that way it's not so intense on your machine in Streamlabs OBS. Now, just to let you know, when you use this performance window here, this is only telling you the performance of Streamlabs OBS. It's not telling you the actual performance of your machine. To do that, you still wanna check out your task manager. Tip number four, be aware of what you're loading into your scenes and sources while you're live on your Streamlabs OBS. If you use Streamlabs OBS, everything likes to back up to the cloud. Every time you add a new scene source or element, at the very bottom of the footer, you're gonna see that little cloud symbol, do a little rotational symbol, and that's it trying to sync to the cloud. If you're live, this can actually have a negative performance on your stream. So I would always recommend anytime you wanna make adjustments or changes, try to do it before or after your stream so that way it doesn't affect your output to your streaming platform of choice. Tip number five is all about what kind of media files you're putting into your Streamlabs OBS. Like we said, if you're a streamer out there that loves to have a lot of visuals, if you're putting a lot of local files into your Streamlab OBS that's backing up to the cloud, that actually can have a negative effect on your Streamlabs OBS again, because it's got to pull that information every time you launch and go live. So what I recommend is if you have larger media files, you actually don't have to back those up to the cloud go into your settings on Streamlabs OBS and go to scene collections and at the very bottom, 
tick on do not back up my media files in the cloud. By the way, this tip is actually very helpful if you have anything that's near one gigabyte, because anything over one gigabyte, Streamlabs will not allow on the cloud backup. Our last tip is all about Murphy's Law when it comes to import. Now, anytime you import anything, a scene, a source, an element, into Streamlabs OBS, it will back up in the cloud like we said earlier. However, I like to play by Murphy's Law because I imagine anything can go wrong and will go wrong. So I recommend anytime you make any big changes that you export your work. To do that, go down to settings and click on scene collections. Click on export overlay file and put this in a file directory on your computer and maybe even a thumb drive so that way you have your work to reflect back on. This is also super important if you plan on buying an overlay package down the road because you don't want to override your work on Streamlabs OBS. You always want to have something that you can fall back on. Streamlabs OBS is a powerful tool, and if you want to learn more about it, you can always look at my videos over on Streamlabs YouTube channel, which I'll put a link to down in the video description below. But if you need any more help with growing your live streaming channel, you need cool tips, tricks, or anything like that, you can hit that big red subscribe button down below and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. And if you want even more tips, hey, I'll just put a video over here to the side that you can watch right now because it helps support my channel. Thank you very much, take care, and as always, peace.